Welcome to the CVMSDC Lunch and Learn series, where we welcome our corporate partners to the network and hear from community leaders. At CVMSDC, the goal is to strengthen the economy by opening doors of opportunity for minority business enterprises, or MBEs. With over 14,000 MBEs and corporate partners in the nationwide network, CVMSDC is your go-to advocacy organization. Now, please welcome CVMSDC President Dominique Milton for today's Lunch and Learn. Welcome everyone to today's Lunch and Learn with Spectrum Reach. Today is a unique program. Normally we talk about how to do business with an organization, but today Spectrum Reach is going to talk to us about how to improve your marketing, the importance of marketing, and how you can really strategize with your marketing efforts. So today I have two professionals who are going to join me. I have Cherry Ellis and I have Claudia Trejos who will join us today and talk to you about marketing. Sherry Ellis is a National Creative Strategy Director for Kernel. Kernel is the internal agency of Spectrum Reach. Her team of strategists and creative professionals provide database insights and full creative services so that messaging is on point, assets are impactful and business goals are met. Sherry has worked in multiple creative arenas, video production, live theater, on-camera talent, magazine columnist, and as a morning drive personality, Cherry Mason on, top, on the top-rated Mason and Dixon Morning Show. Now with Spectrum Reach over 18 years and a grateful recipient of multiple industry awards, Cherry finds great joy in working with clients of all sizes. A huge fan of Targeted Creative, her favorite quote, which I love, regarding advertising from former Netscape CEO Jim Barksdale, who said, if we have data, let's look at the data. If all we have are opinions, let's go with mine. I love that, Jerry. Claudia Trejos is a, is a national campaign strategy analyst for Colonel Spectrum Reach, which is again, the in-house creative agency for Spectrum. During her 10 years at Spectrum Reach, Claudia has worked in every aspect of creative, from writing, producing, editing, and concepting to research and strategy. She also runs the internal Hispanic creative group, Juntos con Colonel and is the lead of the Colonel Multicultural Team. She specifically enjoys working to craft the right creative message that is culturally relevant when working with a multicultural audience. You have two professionals to guide you through this workshop today. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to you ladies. I'm going to go off screen and I'll be back for Q&A. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, can everybody see that in my full screen? Yeah, super. So as business owners, as marketing professional, professionals, we are constantly being tasked with creating content because everything that a customer knows about your brand, they know because they've consumed your content. So today what we're gonna talk about is how to churn out content that actually has a little more oomph to it, that connects with the right people, that um, it gives you a higher return on your investment. And I wanna start by looking for a second at the difference in between advertising and content marketing. So content marketing is a strategic marketing approach that focuses on creating and dispersing um, information that is valuable, that is consistent, and that is relevant. And of course, you're doing that to attract and retain a very specific audience with the ultimate goal, of course, um, being to drive profitable customer action. That is content marketing. Advertising, however, drives profitable customer action uh, by clearly sponsored paid for messaging all out in the open, you are selling something, you're selling a product or a service or an idea. Well, here's the deal. People love content. People do not love what they perceive to be advertising, but really, really good advertising, advertising that is relevant, that does offer actual value to the customer can be seen as content 
it's really all about the messaging. So think of it this way. It doesn't matter if it is a paid sponsored commercial, if it's a social post, a blog, a blog, a YouTube video. The key to consumer engagement is always going to be to offer that consumer something of value. And I'll tell you what, right now, people expect more out of their brands. People expect their brand to be bringing them more in terms of what they are offering. All of the research right now shows that customers do want businesses to protect them physically. They want to know that they are safe when shopping there. They, they want to know that the people that are working there are also safe, but they also expect value and ease of purchase for whatever product and service is being marketed. So now, right now, is the time when businesses need to let their consumers know that they have their back. They, they need to let them know that, yes, we're going to keep you safe, but that they also understand that times are hard in a lot of ways financially for a lot of people. And so what consumers want to know is what that brand is going to offer them in terms of solving a problem. Um, they need to have a problem solved, whether it's a problem that they just developed, right, this red hot second as uh, because of the pandemic, or whether it's a long standing problem. So whether it's old or new, consumers want that problem to be solved for them. And so if consumers learn everything about your brand uh, through your content, how much content do you really need? Is more, more? Well, believe it or not, the secret to successfully engaging the right consumers is not to develop just a massive amount of content. You need to develop a strategy for your content based on your goals. And any kind of strategy in business is always going to start by developing a good, strong marketing objective. Now, one problem that I have seen a lot of businesses have is they confuse a business objective with a marketing objective. A, a marketing objective supports a business objective. Um, a marketing objective moves that customer along through that, that um, purchase journey. A business objective is all about the business. It's what the business wants to accomplish. But a marketing objective is always centered around the consumer. Yeah, so defining the marketing objective starts with identifying what business objective you are trying to promote and then building an objective that is consumer focused and supports that. Your business objective is, let's say, to sell more of your product or service. Your marketing objectives must be focused on how to get the consumer to buy. Ask consumer based questions. You notice how I'm saying consumer? How? Uh, what, who are their prospects? What do you want them to do? When do you want them to do it? What do they want? You want them, let's say, to buy a car, a computer, or follow your legal advice, but they want to be mobile with a car, connected to a new computer, or divorced, thanks for your, to your legal advice. So a marketing objective comes from the answers to consumer-focused questions. Let's look at an example for a small business, a fictional cake box in studio. So we'll start with our famous five W's as the base. Who, what, when, where, and why. So let's say for here, we want young adults who are health oriented, they like physical fitness, and they live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and they make about $55,000 a year. They want to sign up for a two week trial membership at your kickboxing studio. You want them to sign up for that by September 1st and you want them to do it online. Why? Because they're gonna get a great value. They're gonna be able to experience the kickboxing studio and they will have um, maybe just one-on-one -on -one training with personal trainers or something like that. So this will be our marketing objective to drag young, fitness oriented adults with a household income of 55,000 and more in Charlotte to kickitcharlotte.com to sign up for a two week trial membership at the kickboxing studio by September 1st. This is it. 
All of your content developed for this campaign should be judged on how it supports this one objective. Now we need to look at the developing our message. Once again, we start with our, that's right, consumer. Because before a consumer can do anything, they have to first make the decision to do it. So really good effective messaging is going to address uh, the why or why not in the consumer uh, in the consumer's decision making process. So understanding what drives a customer to make a decision is going to help you determine what you're going to say and also how you're going to say it. It gives your business a problem to solve. It gives you a, a value to share. So, so think about it. What do we know about this targeted consumer right now? Well, what we know is that COVID changed everything. Right now, every consumer's immediate situation takes precedence over whatever their pre-COVID uh, profile was. That means everything we know about our key consumer groups have been greatly impacted by current circumstances. So think about it. Let's take our target uh, kickatcharlotte.com consumer. Uh, what do we know about them? Pre-COVID, this is what we knew about them. They are young, they're fitness oriented, they're working out at the gym three or more times a week. They take fitness classes regularly. They eat meals out in a restaurant five or more times a week. They work full time. They love to travel and do so six or more times a year. And they have a household income of $55,000 or more. But have things changed for this consumer now? Well, yeah. Um, I mean, think about how this consumer might have been impacted. Uh, they have not been going to the gym and participating in fitness classes, at least not in person or as uh, not as frequently. They have not been dining out or traveling with their usual consistency. They might have lost their job. They might have had a reduction in pay because of lost commissions. Are they working remotely? Can they work remotely? Um, and even as things do start to go back to normal, how do they feel psychologically about resuming their old activities? And how they feel is probably the same way that we all feel. A little bit apprehensive, personally a little bit lazy to get out of my house anymore. But research shows that many Americans are still very stressed out about the, what the new normal it might be as a result of the last year and a half. So developing content and messaging needs to be taken to talk about these new stress points. They, we need to answer to their concerns and to the consumer situations. So research shows that many Americans are going, are going to be easing back into the activities that were routine before. Because remember that consumers expect value to be relevant to their situation. So messaging now needs to embrace shifting consumer behavior. There are four fundamental shifts happening right now. One, they have shifted to spend on things of value and that are essential. They are now spending more money online and feel a lot more comfortable doing so. Their loyalty to a business is on hold, if not lost. Consumers are shopping differently, exploring new brands, exploring new places. And they're still thinking twice before spending anything outside of their home. So depending on where your consumer is in that um, purchase journey, there's a lot of different stages to a selling funnel or a purchase journey. But for our conversation today, let's just look at the three big majors. You have awareness, you have consideration, you have decision making. You become aware of a product or a service, you weigh whether or not it has features and benefits for you, and then you make the decision to either pull the trigger and buy it or not. So depending on where you are in that buyer's journey, Journey, it requires best practices, different types of creative to convert consumers from one stage to the next and move them through that, that journey. So you have narrative or storytelling, 
uh, type of content when you want to build your brand and make an emotional connection, but you also have educational or information-based content. So you can see here what this shows you is at the beginning of that buyer's journey, when you are building awareness, you almost always lean into completely educational content. You are explaining who you are, what your product is. Um, you're, you're finding out how buyers educate themselves on their goals and their challenge. Um, how do buyers prioritize their goals? So you're giving them all sorts of information. Now, as you move into the consideration phase, you see that the informational part drops back a little bit and you can start to tell a little bit more of narrative. You start to attach more storytelling to it. Then when you get to the end, when you get to decision-making, see how it's completely reversed. You've already logged into their consciousness. They already are aware of your product or your service. Um, now is the time you want to make an emotional connection to them. Now is your time to shine. Now is when you want to tell a story. But the story has got to be relevant. Um, because remember, relevant information to me offers me something of value. So I want you as a business or as a brand to pick a problem that I have and solve it for me. And that means you're going to have to tell me what I want to know, not whatever it is you want to tell me. Now, this next slide is always my favorite slide, and I'm a thousand years old, and it has been my favorite slide forever. You have got to tell the story your customer wants to hear, not the story you want to tell. That makes so much sense. Think about it. Your family's legacy in the restaurant business might be what motivates you every day to drive in before the sun comes up and flip those lights on. But does that make me want to eat there? Does the fact that you're a third generation restaurateur make me want to get dinner there on a Tuesday night? Nobody turns to their spouse and says, honey, I'm really craving something family owned and operated for dinner. You have got to tell me the story I want to hear, not the story you want to tell me. So again, we're gonna start with our consumer. What story do they need to hear? What is the why or why not you need to answer for them? Then we look at your business. What are the brand points of your business that match that of your consumer? How can you be a hero to the consumer by solving a problem, meeting a need, offering value, providing an experience, selling them that burger they're craving? Look at the market. Are there outside factors that will impact your consumer that needs to be addressed in your creative? Let's say that your market has a strong multicultural community. Make sure you create um, highlights of that cultural nuances in the market in your creative and in your content. You might need a different content and different creative to speak to the different cultures in your market. These connection points help you build your story and support messaging points. But careful, don't be tone deaf. Be respectful, bring value, and be very genuine in the voice of the brand. In this new normal, it's not only important to talk about health and safety, but it's also important to be culturally relevant and be inclusive in an authentic way. Let's say your creator speaks to these values. Make sure your company, business, and brand live up to them. And here's another thing to consider. Where you put this content matters. As we look at the best practices for creating content, we have to first look at where your consumer will be consuming that content. Where we watch video makes a huge, huge difference in how we view, engage, and react to the content. You need to make sure your campaign is coordinated between the creative and the media. So develop the creative strategy around where and how it will be viewed and make sure your elements are consistent. A couple of things, online videos are often watched without sound. Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat are usually watched vertically. 90% of handheld devices are used in portrait mode. mode. So know where the content is going to be seen before you create it. That way you can cater to those mediums. Personally, and I think Cherry too, we are big fans of videos. It delivers the most amount of information in the least amount of time with the highest retention level. 
So when picking your platform, start with your audience. Content marketing is driven by consumer. What channels are they using the most? Pay attention to how they behave on each channel, how they interact with the content and what they find valuable. Your strategy should revolve around the customer, not the channel. So what? So what's the best format for your message? The story that needs to be told using video, information that will be impactful as an infographic, or an article or white paper that will educate the consumer about a topic related to their business. A strong message might be shared using all of the above. Now then we're gonna look at the connections between where you consumer are engaging with the content, what format is the best way to achieve your message and your marketing objective. So pick a platform based on what you are trying to accomplish. Visual based messages like infographics can be shared on multiple social platforms, but do best on visually based platforms like Instagram or over text platforms like Twitter. Video is a powerful content format and it needs to be developed based on where the video will be seen. Claudia is completely right. We are the biggest video fans in the world. Video delivers the most amount of information in the least amount of time, and it has the highest retention level. And that's why so many businesses are using video even outside advertising purposes. So today, let's talk a little bit about best practice for video, depending on where you're going to watch it. So you have video by platform, you have television, you have online advertising, and you have social. So let's start with TV commercials. Um, Avoid saying too much. Everybody wants to put all of this information, but people are only going to take away three things max out of a 30 second television commercial. So focus and target on what it is you want them to remember. Also, TVs are big big TVs. So you want to use that to your advantage. You can make a big visual impact when you're working with televisions. Um, sounds simple, but people forget it all the time. You want to stay away from seasonal shots. You don't want Christmas decorations in the back of something that's running in the summer. Um, also, stay away from wide panning shots. I see a lot of businesses try to show how much inventory they have in their store, but really you can't pick a lot of detail out of that. And so unless the copy point is specifically about how much you have about one particular item, Item, just stay away from those big wide panning shots. Those wide far away views really don't engage the viewer that much. Also, you have to have a strong call to action. You know, something time sensitive, act now, save today. Um, it creates a little bit of a sense of urgency for the viewer. Uh, but remember, if you're going to do that and you're going to link it to a certain space in time, you have to make sure that you're not saying, you know, only good till tomorrow. You have to make sure that your creative is keeping up and matching the timing that you're talking about. Video don'ts on television. Um, Stay away from cliches and superlatives, uh, the greatest, the best. Um, everybody has great service. Everybody thinks they have friendly staff. Try to focus on what really makes your business stand out. And um, just in general, stay away from statements that can't be proven. Unless you're holding a trophy that says you have a number one rating or something, then uh, and that award is somehow incredibly impactful to your business or your industry, just don't include it. You don't have the real estate for it. So that's television. Moving on to online ads. Um, you got to grab their attention in the first five seconds uh, when you're doing a pre-roll video ad. There's a widely quoted stat, and I think it's from 2016. It's, it's a study that was conducted by Myriad, and it says that over 90% of people skip a pre-roll ad after five seconds. Now, that was in 2016. Imagine how fast they're skipping it now. Um, online, self-awareness and a sense of humor go a really long way. Um, you got to play on the fact that you're trying to beat that skip button. So if you're using humor, it's a fantastic best practice to set up the, the joke or the premise and then do the punchline or the payoff on second six, and then you have beat that skip button. 
Um, do not uh, produce pre-roll ads over 15 seconds, just don't. Um, clear call to action online cannot be overstated. Your video has such a tiny, tiny little window of time to convince the viewer to do something. So you want to be really clear about your offer and be very clear about how it personally benefits them. Um, also make sure that all the IAB standards and everything are followed in the setup so that your videos can play where they need to play. So you got TV, you got online ads, then you have social media videos. Straight up, you gotta know if you need to be square. Don't use auto cropping apps. You get weird formatting and you cut people's heads off. Um, mind the length. More than half of mobile users now leave a website that takes more than three seconds to load. That is how our attention span is going these days. People click off within three seconds. Um, the most important thing about social media video is that you have to make sure that it can be um, viewed without sound. People sneak watch so much social video. How many times have you sat in a doctor's office and watched a video with the sound off? So when you're doing video for social media, you have to make sure that people can watch it and it's going to be equally effective with or without the audio. So that means you either need to close caption it, have graphics on screen, somehow make sure that your story is told that way as well. So we have talked about business goals, marketing objectives, what platform, um, what format. Now we can finally get creative. So the first thing you have to do when you're gonna get creative is you put all that front work in, right? Typically people come to marketers and they're like, oh, just get creative. Just bring me some creative ideas. And that's completely at the end of the process. You gotta go through all of that front work, figure out what your strategy is, and then you get creative. Now telling somebody to get creative is a little bit like saying, you know, be funny. What does that even mean? I mean, you feel like you're being creative, but how do you really know that, that you're coming up with an idea that's going to resonate, that's going to connect with your consumer? Well, the first thing you're going to want to decide is what kind of message are we developing? Is it going to be informational this go round or is it going to be narrative? Both informational pieces and narrative pieces have a place in your content plan. So to determine which direction you want to go with your piece, think about what you're trying to accomplish and the best way to communicate that with your consumer. If you're focused on educating consumers on a complicated product or service, a concise, clear informational piece is the best way to convey that message. If you're developing your brand and building an emotional connection with consumers, a narrative storytelling approach can be better. Also, very, very important, you need to consider how frequently a consumer will be exposed to your content. We get bored. So the more information based, the faster it will wear out and people will get tired of it. Think of it this way. You will watch the news once, but how many times have you watched an episode of your favorite TV show? Personally, Natty the Fiance on repeat all day. People enjoy stories, even the ones that you have already heard. That's completely true. So content gonna do you no good if it's not memorable. And let me tell you, overall, my biggest piece of advice is to develop your content within your limitations. People are constantly telling people to think outside the box. I ask you to do just the opposite. I want you to think inside the box because an artist can only paint to the edge of the frame. You've got to know your limitations before you can come up with your creative messaging. Um, that's why there's been such great creative come out of this pandemic because there have been such bizarre and stringent parameters. The edge of the frame kept moving in closer and closer to us. And that's why uh, the, the creative that I'm seeing coming out of this era is really amazing. So your content's got to be memorable. That means it's got to resonate. How do you make it resonate? Well, first of all, number one, 
turns out your mom was right. Uh, you really do only get one chance to make a first impression. So how do you want your brand to do it? Well, I would want my brand to cross the room, look that consumer in the eye, shake their hand firmly and make them as a customer feel seen. Um, number two, you gotta break through the clutter and the clutter is unbelievable these days. How can you really avoid being white noise? So check this out. According to VentureBeat.com, Google serves so many ads a day. How many ads a day do you think Google is serving? Put a number in your head. Right now, Google serves almost 30 billion ads a day. That means the average consumer is exposed to around five to 7,000 ads a day. So your creative is gonna to have to break through that. It's gonna to have to get noticed before it can get remembered. Finally, never forget the quality of your content completely reflects on the quality of your brand. Um, if you're cutting corners that, that I can tell by watching a commercial, what other corners are you cutting? If, if you're not going to use a professional voiceover on your commercial, it makes your brand look cheap. It makes me wonder what other corners you are cutting. Content is powerful. Everything that I know about your brand, I know because I consumed your content. So do the front work, make your targeted decisions, make your marketing objective, and then your content is gonna build your brand and your business. Now, thank you for listening to all of that information. Before I sign off, I am going to hand it over to Latasha, who's gonna tell you some uh, details about Spectrum Reach's Pay It Forward program. Hello, thank you, Cherry and Claudia. Everyone, you have just learned about content marketing as well as video marketing. And we have a great opportunity for you to be able to put everything that you just learned into practice, into action. Uh, we have a program and it's called Pay It Forward. And it's a program that Spectrum Reach just launched. And it's an opportunity for businesses to register for a chance to apply for a $15,000 advertising grant. Within this grant, um, recipients will have an opportunity to get an advertising schedule that's within a three month period that will run July through September of this year. The commercial that will be created or the video will be created through our partnership with Waymark. What's so great about this video is that you will actually own it. So in addition to it being video content that could run on television on any number of cable networks, such as ESPN, HGTV, Food, OWN, um, any number of networks, um, you will also be able to utilize that video on your website or through your social media. Within this program, uh, businesses will also receive support from our marketing team as well as any number of local experts that we will be working with throughout this period. The application period will end on June 13th. Below here is a link where you can apply and we're looking forward for any and everyone to participate. Now, I think we'll open it up for any questions. Outstanding ladies, Claudia. Sherry, Latasha, outstanding. And the fact that you're bringing a program to our MBEs valued at $15,000 with the consulting for content marketing, that is tremendous. That is That could be business changing. We look forward to working with you on this program. So thank you for your presentation today. It was fantastic. We do have a few questions coming in. And so the first question that I have is, you know, I've been an MBE and sometimes MBEs have limited budgets in terms of marketing. Um, or they're just not thinking that marketing is where they should put their dollars, right? So what are some ways to generate smart content on small business, small budgets? What do you want me to go? So the decision to, to market and advertise is a huge one because to... To, to have a business and be trying to grow your business and not advertise it, I think of it as like trying to throw a party and not sending out invitations. 
You know, you might have the chocolate fountain, but if nobody knows about it, what are you going to do? And so if you have a small budget, I think the front work on your content marketing is even more important because you want to be so targeted because you don't want to talk to everybody because guess what? Not everybody is your consumer. So you do all that front work and you get as targeted as you possibly can. And you use your content in a way that it can be used in more than one area. So say you don't have the budget to do a huge video shoot. Um, if you have the budget to do a small video shoot, then you make a plan to triage that footage yeah. in a lot of different ways. Now I'm going to hand it over to Claudia because nobody targets the consumer. She is a research genius. So the information that you can make out of working with people like Claudia in this pay it forward, forward program is immense. Claudia, what would you add to that? Yeah, I mean, part of the work yeah. before you even do any creative is understanding who are you speaking to and partnering with somebody that knows about research and can use all of the different, I mean, just think about it. You're on Facebook and you're talking about something and Facebook is already showing you ads about that. So there is so much information about consumers out there that learning exactly what they want and what we talked about, where are they watching, what are they looking for, that will just elevate and your chances of being in front of the right consumer. Um, so make sure that you do all that hard work before. And if you don't have the budget to work with a professional, Google is amazing. You can find so many things online, you know, so not only understand your consumer, but how is your business going to talk to that consumer? And Google can help you because that, you know, we're all very creative, but the reality is there's more businesses like ours out there, right? Like people have done it already before. So you can learn from the good and the bad and the mistakes that other people have done, the successes that other people have done. And you can find that just on the internet very, very easily as well. Very good, very good. Well, the next question is for you, Claudia, or anyone that wants to jump in, but how can we incorporate multiculturalism and inclusivity in our content marketing better than what we're doing right now? So happy this question is here. Um, well, you know, again, be authentic, be very, very authentic. And also think just, you don't need to be a multicultural business speaking to a multicultural group or a, a multicultural consumer. You need to just look at who are we really, like what's the reality of our, of our world? You know, like a lot of people personally, I'm Latina, I'm from Colombia, but fine, I look, like a Colombian Latina, but my family might not, right? Or other people might not. So don't know, don't go by what you think you know about other cultures, but really get to know them, really speak to them, really, again, do a lot of research and just be authentic. Families nowadays, not all look uh, caramel color, black hair, right. black <laughs> color eyes. We all look right. different nowadays, right? So just because you're speaking to, let's say a Hispanic family, don't, they, they're not all to, need to look the same way. And you, know, you need to be very aware of that we're very different nowadays. And you know, that is the most important thing. We're not what people think that we are as a multicultural um, target audience. Very good, very We need to also enlist the help of professionals, right? Because we don't know what we don't know. So if you're trying to reach an audience, you need to be very careful about how you, the messaging that you're utilizing. Sherry, did you have something you want to add? I'm just going to say, I feel like we're making great strides in that area, but we're not there yet. And uh, the example uh, Claudia and I always talk about is, you know, you will see in terms of inclusivity, you'll see video with somebody in a wheelchair. But right now, it seems like the plot is always about the fact that that person is in the wheelchair. We will have made really good strides when you have people in a wheelchair in the video that has nothing to do with the story at hand. It's just accurate accurately reflecting the world around us. Wow, okay, very good, very good. So let's talk about creativity a lot, a, a little bit, because sometimes we just stumped. We just cannot get past our own bubble, right? And so how do you bring those creative juices in when you're just not feeling creative? You want me to go? Well, I mean, I can go first and then tell you, go we ahead. always say, think bigger, think mm -hmm. big, 
think crazy, think all the things that you think that you can't do and then scale it down. So okay, that's how we work. every time you feel like, oh, I wish I could see something like this, write it down, put it there, make it as your plan. And then little by little start scaling down to something that you can actually accomplish and afford and actually goes with your brand and your business and your story. I like that strategy that we, we usually start with just throwing everything on the wall, right? The biggest ideas, the biggest wish list you have, and then kind of peel back from there. So I like the advice of John Cleese, you know, the John Cleese, a fish called Wanda, you know, that John Cleese. And he says, in order to consistently generate um, creative thought, he needs five things. He needs time, time, space, safety and humor. So he needs time because he said, you have to schedule time to be creative. You can't wait for inspiration to hit you in the grocery store. Number two, again, you need time and you have to say how much time you're gonna work on that problem at hand before you bail. He says, nothing needs longer than 90 minutes to think about it. But if you bail after 45 minutes, when you've scheduled 90 minutes, then, you know, all you're going to get is your low hanging fruit. So you got time, you got time, you got space. This is extremely important with so many people working from home. You designate a workspace, you honor that space, and that triggers your brain to go into a creative thought pattern when you get into that space. The fourth one, safety. That's my favorite one, because you know what that is? That is your team. And if you cannot throw bizarre concepts against the wall in front of your team, then you are on the wrong team. You need to be able to wildly fail in front of your team to get to those really good creative thoughts. And finally, the last one is humor. There is no subject so serious that it needs to be somber. So I've done some pretty sad videos, but let me tell you, those were some pretty funny brainstorm sessions. And so uh, don't mistake um, somber for serious. And that's John Cleese's advice on that. That is excellent advice, Cherry. And I might add that with that safety, you are safer when you have a diverse group of people giving you input, right? So if your team all looks the same, you're not going to have that multicultural reach, right? You're not going to be able to get outside the box if you want to. I love the in the box, in the box concept that you, you share with us, Cherry, but you need a diverse perspective, age, you know, gender, race, to be able to make sure that you're reaching everyone and, and getting that content out there. Very, very good. Let's talk. Um, let me see if um, we have any questions from the field. Taya, do you have any questions coming in? Sure, Dominique. Um, one question is, what is relationship marketing and what are the benefits? And Cherry, you're on mute. <laughs> one call in my life, I would love to have somebody not have to tell me, <laughs> just once. I've been doing this now for 14 months. Um, Claudia, how would you define relationship marketing? Because I want to make sure I'm taking it from the correct angle. Um, I think, I mean, again, and maybe it's because of my background, but I think it's really getting to know each other, right? Like getting to know the business and then getting to know the consumer and how to get there and how to make the right connections to get to them. Because, you know, sometimes you can use other businesses, even if they're in the same industry or some, or, you know, similar industry to do some marketing there. I don't know if I'm answering this super correctly, but. I think it, to build on that relationship marketing, I think is more about keeping your consumer than it is about finding your consumer to start with, because I can get you to buy my product, but then we're on, we're on. Now we have a relationship. And I think of relationship marketing as the little ways, um, the things that a business does to keep my business. Um, a great example of that is like Chewy.com. You know, it's dog food that is delivered. It costs more money. You think dog food is dog food. I love this brand. Are you kidding? They, they do nice things for my dog. I will pay a lot for that. That is relationship marketing. They're keeping me by building a relationship with me. That was excellent. Thank you, ladies. And, and then the other question is, and you kind of touched on it a little bit, but maybe we can dig a little bit deeper, is if I am advertising, why do I still need social media? 
I would say you still need social media because advertising is a bully pulpit. Advertising is where I get to say what I want to say. Social media is where people get to answer me. Social media is where I get feedback about my brand. It gives the consumer a voice. Yeah, and again, it's a way, a place where um, the consumer can actually go and look for you and believe you, right? Like, so you see it, I see a commercial, and then if I try to look for you on a, a lot of people, most of the people are going to look for you on Facebook or Instagram first, okay. then maybe Google and see if maybe you have a website. But if you have um, social media, you can actually get them and say, hey, we do actually exist. And I was actually talking about some friends about this last weekend we were finding a restaurant for brunch and I was telling them the pictures on social media were horrible and they didn't have a lot of posts and it didn't look as nice as the place that we went to. You know, we just found it, but then actually when we looked at their social media feed, I was like, oh man, I wish they had better Instagram pictures and better feeds because it's such a nice place, but it doesn't reflect on your social media. And how did I find them? Through social media, then I did some Google reviews and I read all of the reviews and I was like, okay, let me give them a chance. And it was an amazing surprise, but again, wish they had a great social media um, to match. Very good, very good. And to me that social media is the relationship, right? It's instant, it's responsive, and you're building those relationships. People are going there and they're able to add their comments and it just becomes more personal. So that's, that's important. So we're, we're getting a lot of pivots. I, I love how Cherry said she's just seen so much new creative coming out this year um, since we've been you know, faced with the pandemic. What about the timing of when you reach your customers, right? So you know, we're talking, you, you, you gave us the whole formula, but then there's also the piece of at which point do I advertise? At what time of day? And it's different for each customer. How do you tune into the timing of, of, of reaching your customers? I like to think in terms, of, you know, I mean, everything is different. It depends on what your competitor's doing, how cluttered the marketplace is in that particular um, situation. I think that you need to start frequent and wide okay. and then don't drop off as soon as you want to, because it takes about 11 to 15 weeks to make any kind of dent into a brand response. So I would say 11 to 15 weeks, depending on what else is going on in the market. And then you can not only um, go a little less frequently, you can also go to shorter edits because you've already gotten into their head. Now you can tell that story maybe in 15 seconds. You can do less. Excellent. And also Excellent. you can't, you know, think about what consumer your video is targeting. If you're targeting moms, you might need to go maybe a little bit middle in the day when the kids are sleeping. But if you're called, you know, doing people that work in the morning, then, you know, 7 a.m. or they're working out early. So they're active. So think about like your, and you might, again, you might need different creative for different groups of people and put that creative on those different times of the day. Um, what, of what that certain group of people is more active. And um, again, a lot of research, research can tell you this, partners can tell you this, but also just thinking about your family and friends. Again, if you don't have a big budget to do research, you know, what are the different age groups and the different types of people and where are they most on their phone or watching TV and or at home? So you can look, so, do some of your own research as well. Excellent, excellent. Well, let's wrap up with some success stories. I, our listeners always love to hear about how you've helped someone to change their business, change their strategy, and just, just I, I need to hear the application. So are there any success stories that are just near and dear to your heart that you'd like to share? You're on mute again, Cherry. Damn it. Twice in one call, unbelievable. And my cell phone rang while we were talking. I mean, do I do this for a living? Um, so I have seen some amazing work with nonprofits. I have seen nonprofits do some incredible things through video profits. First of all, nonprofits almost always are struggling on their budget. 
Um, there was a domestic violence group in Birmingham, Alabama, and the stats surrounding the assaults, the sexual assaults were going up and there was nothing they could do about it. The police force accepted responsibility and wanted to receive training. They gave all of this time to them. They said, we'll have every policeman in that zip code in that room for two hours a day but they didn't have the staff to do that kind of training. But through video, they figured that out. And so they quickly dropped back, punted, did a two hour video training session and got it in front of every single policeman in that zip code. And so they were able to pull off really important training information and really make a difference with a teeny tiny budget. And it's one of the favorite videos I've ever been fortunate enough to work with. Excellent story. Thank you for that. And you talked about how important video is, right? People just don't want to read anything anymore. They just want to go straight to the video and it lives on and on. So that's powerful. Thank you for that. Claudia, do you have a story? Yes. So one of my favorite, was a few years ago, I was still producing. Um, I had a, a county public schools. They had a small grant and they wanted to advertise to recruit teachers. Small grant, we couldn't show kids on camera because it would take forever to do all of the release forms and all of that. And she had a very uh, tight deadline. So we ended up doing a commercial showing all of the classrooms empty and just doing really, really strong copywriting. And we ended up winning an award for that commercial and they were able to recruit what the, the people that they needed to recruit. So again, in one of those things where you have a lot of limitations, you just get creative somehow and you know video is powerful because it has audio it has music and it has yes. voice it has visuals it has text so using all of those elements you can really make something very powerful excellent well thank you ladies well we're going to wrap up latasha i was going to have you do a wrap up of, of the pay it forward program so i'm going to get to you in just a second if you could come back to us but sherry any closing comments um I would love to see a lot of people uh, get involved in that pay it forward program. Mm -hmm. And even without the program, when you work with Spectrum Reach, all of that information mm -hmm. is at no charge. And so mm -hmm. here are those researchers that Claudia's got nothing to do. She wants to pull information for you. Take advantage of that. It's so impactful. Now I'm on mute. Very good. Thank you so much, Cherry. Um, Latasha, any closing comments about the Pay It Forward program? Because I don't, you know, I always tell people you have to come to the table to participate and to eat, right? If you don't apply, you're going to miss out on this opportunity. And we have, um, I think it's about five grants that are available Absolutely. for in this footprint. So this is, this is tremendous. What yes, the tell us about the deadline. Sure. Um, the deadline is June 13th. If you're located in anywhere across North and South Carolina, parts of Virginia, where Spectrum, Spectrum has a footprint, you are very welcome to apply. Uh, we work with businesses of all sizes, um, local, regional, national, and this is for you. So um, as you said, Dominique, if, if you don't step up to the plate and apply, um, you cannot be considered. And so we want as many businesses to be a part of this as possible. Um, the application is very simple. Um, there's just some general questions about your business and you click send. So we hope to be able to share the link out with everyone um, after this discussion. That is tremendous. Again, thank you so much for the opportunity. Claudia, do you want to close us out? Any comments? Sure, I mean, I'll do my little multicultural pitch. Think about everybody, talk to everybody, and you know, really make sure that you are thinking more than just who your business, your normal business, people are and who are come to your business normally, but see who your market is built with. There's so many different people that might be interested in your business that don't know about you yet. So let's, you know, get the word out about who you are and use all the different methods that you can do that. Thank you so much, ladies. And thank you for the education today on content marketing. For our listeners, please join us on August 2nd and 3rd for our business opportunity conference, which is our largest conference of the year. We will have lots of information for you. There's gonna be matchmaking opportunity for our business owners who want to meet with corporations they would like to do business with. 
We're gonna have a session on technology. It's Technology Noir, looking at the fastest growing industry of technology. And we're gonna have from um, students to multimillionaires um, who are talking about how they built their tech companies just at light speed. And people are building these companies and selling them, becoming billionaires overnight. The whole theme for the con conference is a growth mindset. How you grow from millions to billions, how you position your corporation, your, your, your small business to grow to a very large business. And we're going to have some billionaires who share their secret with you on how they've grown their businesses. So I'm looking forward to seeing each of you again, August 2nd and 3rd registration opens up um, next week, beginning of June. And so we are looking forward to seeing you at our event, August 2nd and 3rd. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you are interested in doing a Lunch and Learn series, please visit us at info at cvmsdc.org. Send us an email. We'll be happy to get you scheduled. Thank you so much, ladies, and have a fantastic day.